Hello sailors, you're watching the Dodger Kebab, and this video is a look at PlayStation 4 games you can only download from the Japanese PlayStation Store. To some of you, this will sound as pointless as Microsoft HoloLens. But Japan has a long history of great country exclusive video games. Let's take a look at game number one, which is called Get It Gun. Double Piece. Or Gal Gun Double Piece if you really must have the English name. I use the PlayStation 4's built-in video recording features to capture the footage, so that means we all have to put up with this watermark during the game. So we are greeted by a title screen with the main girls and, well, whatever the fuck this is. Then we are led into a customization menu with different options, which do absolutely nothing at all. When you see the game in a few seconds, you'll see that this might do something, but clothes, agility and definitely not intellect, they have no bearing on this video game whatsoever. And the game starts now. So this girl starts talking to you. Then this girl starts talking with a change of music. This is followed up by the arrival of a girl with a mask on the side of her head. I'm pretty sure no school in Japan is authorising this as part of the school uniform. The other girl runs off, possibly to check up on the dress code. The masked girl suddenly disappears and no one is left, so fuck knows where that first girl went. The next screen shows a mysterious girl on the top of a building, checking her phone. Sorry love, this is no time for Twitter. She casts a ball of light and now she has guns. With the guns, she starts to take aim at some people, but stops when she spots a demon hiding behind a sign. She makes a phone call again and shoots her gun and... This dude, who I'm guessing you play as, gets shot by these love guns, then the chicks talk to you. What the fuck was all that about? This game is so mental. There are retards holding fundraisers for this shit. My guess is that this bird is some sort of anime cupid, and her guns work like cupid's bow and arrow. The person that you control now has these powers. You worked all that out by yourself? You're a lot smarter than you look. Well, I've already played the game, so I know what's coming next. And what's that? This. That's right, it's an on-rail shooter that requires you to aim your love gun at girls, and then shoot them until they succumb to you. On top of that, every so often, a girl comes along that needs to be touched enough before she succumbs to you. Now, for some reason, the built-in PS4 recorder blacks out this section, but I've borrowed some footage from a Japanese YouTuber called Gamer Rin Rin to show this part. Either way, this section is rather tame compared to later sections of the game, which would send certain areas of the internet to go into nuclear meltdown. Right, enough of this, let's move on to the game called Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Eyes of Heaven. This game has a very strangely placed watermark when using the PS4 built-in PVR. It places it over the in-game map, so it doesn't really get in the way. Back to the game itself, and it does one thing correct right away. That's playing the sounds from the controller. Like here, when you select a character to play with. I don't know why I like this so much, but I do. On from this, you are given inconceivable instructions while you wait for the most milked loading time I've ever seen on a console. Although, this does give you time to grasp the fact that this is a partner-based fighting game. What sort of fighting game? The worst sort, a spectacle fighting game. You are in an arena where you and your partner run around and mash buttons to produce what looks like an impressive beat-em-up action game. Once you've mashed enough buttons in many, many different ways, you'll discover this move. <laughs> Then it's pretty much over for the other side, as you'll do this over and over. Once you've spanned your way through the battle, the game offers you another fight, but this time it's in a posh mansion that during the fight turns into an inferno. This game is just not fun. I admit the footage makes it look great, but trust me, it's a big dog turd in a shiny presentation box. Next, we have a game by Square Enix. You know, the guys that keep finding new and ingenious ways to fuck up the Final Fantasy series. Well, they have made this game, Dragon Quest Builders. Dragon Quest is a long, great running RPG series that the Japanese go totally mental for. So mental that they even built a Dragon Quest themed pub in Tokyo. 
Anyway, so this is Dragon Quest Builders, and just from the title screen, I'm getting Minecraft vibes from this. So, let's see what this is about. So, we collect some... well, I don't know what they are. I can use them on what seems to be a crafting table. Now I've been given a stick. And what do I do with a stick? Of course, I smash blocks so I can collect their component pieces. This has borrowed a few ideas from Minecraft, I think it's safe to say. Now I'm placing the block. Now another. Oh, and it looks like I've escaped the dungeon. What does the world look like? Well, yep, it does look quite a bit like Minecraft too. One thing for sure though, attacking the mobs is a lot easier than Minecraft. So, I make my way to where the game clearly wants me to go. Right, I'm guessing this is my new home then. Again, there is no escaping the fact that this looks very much like Minecraft. Although this woman here, she looks like she wants me to do something. Something to do with my house. I'm guessing she wants me to fill the holes in the walls. Yep. So, quest complete. Now back to the crafting table to make some more stuff. Oh, come on! This is just a Japanese flavour of Minecraft with Dragon Quest slapped on it. This is such a shameless rip-off, it frankly astounds me that Microsoft did not set their lawyers onto Square Enix. Nostarius makes a non-profit community version of vanilla World of Warcraft, which doesn't compete at all with a retail version, and Blizzard loses its fucking mind. Square Enix copy-paste Minecraft, then start actually selling the damn game on the PlayStation 4, and Microsoft's like, meh, whatever. It's unbelievable! Next. The final game in this video, when written, is this. I wasn't 100% on what that said, so I found the official website to get some answers. I found that this game is called Love Revenge, but I also found this. Then I found this. So I immediately downloaded the free version and started playing. So this is Love Revenge, and all the girls have massive bangers. The game plays very much like this. People come on the screen and talk. Then after a while, they go away again. This is what is known as a dating simulator. Although, my understanding was that you were given choices every so often, so the storyline could branch out in different ways. But not here, there are no choices given, and this is all you do. Soon you'll get bored, and you'll do this. This continued for so long, I started playing like this. I played for ages, but I never got to the point where you play like this. Just endless text, never ending people popping up only to disappear soon after, and incomprehensible dialogue. This is all I saw. I know this video doesn't quite put Japanese PS4 games in a really positive light, but don't worry, I'm sure there are much better games than this that I've just not seen yet. Hello sailors, thank you for watching the video, hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to support me in my future videos, there's a Patreon link down there if you want to go that way, or by request, I've now added a direct PayPal donate button, so if you want to do it that way, do it that way. There's other things you can do, you can follow me on social media like Facebook and Twitter, and why not have a look at these other videos I'm linking on the screen right now. Anyway, that's all, bye bye.